see you guys here today, Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Um, looking forward to uh, Boston College game. Well coached football team. They're doing a good job this year. Uh, and we'll have our hands full defending a very good player, Tyler Murphy, young man that you don't see uh, lead the team in rushing and passing. You don't see that a bunch right now out there in college football. Very good football player, older kid, transferred in. A pretty good story. So hopefully we can slow him down and that offense. Uh, kids have gone to work this week, uh, and we're just looking forward to the challenge. So with that, any questions? <laughs> I know how often you like to use current events to provide lessons to, to the team. Um, do you talk to them at all, or well, do you play around with Baron Wilson and, and the Ferguson riots? Is there anything you can kind of talk to them about with that? You know, the toughest thing for me is in season. I am not well versed in what's going on in the world uh, to the point where, you know, off season more times than not, or maybe after the season we'll use examples of things that are going on. But right now we're just kind of focused in on getting ready for this next game. But uh, I do like to, you know, reflect on what's going on in the real world with the kids. Tough to do sometimes when you have preparation for a game. Yeah. Scott, how you doing? Good. Seniors, obviously, all throughout this team, what it means to have this final game with them and what you've said to them about that? Well, we've talked about a lot, you know, going back to our, our uh, senior day, you know, a couple of weeks back. Um, and I think the biggest thing we want to do is, uh, you know, we want to send them off in a positive way. And we have a great group of kids. So they've done a great job, uh, both sides of the fence, academically, on the football field, and in the community. This, especially this group, um, whether it's Cam Lynch or Dyshawn Davis. I mean, we have so many kids that have done some really great things above and beyond the football side of things and above and beyond the academic side of things. So this group in particular, Sam Rogers, you know, um, is a group that uh, I'm going to really miss this group. You know, I said it earlier in the year, they are a very unselfish group of guys that think outside of themselves, um, and that's just kind of their, their makeup. And... We're going to miss them. We haven't said a whole lot about last game and all that, you know. Uh, we just said we want to go out there and, and, and try to win this last game at Boston College, a rivalry that, you know, has been around for a long time. And, uh, you know, focus on those types of controllables and then understand that after the fact we'll have a lot of time to hug and, and uh, reflect and uh, have that, that time to appreciate one another. You kind of all the tough stuff you've gone through this year. It's, it seems like on the recruiting trail, it hasn't really affected you too much. Anyone who's left has kind of been their own particular instance, you know, we can't name names, and you've gotten a few guys recently. How encouraging is that for you just to see that while you guys might not be winning on the field, it doesn't seem to have affected you significantly in recruiting? No, you put your head down, and you just go to work hard, and uh, you put your product out there, and what a great product we have. You know, this university here at Syracuse is a special place. Um, so it's a, it's a really easy sell that way. I have an extraordinary uh, group of young men going out on the trail recruiting that do a great job. Uh, a lot of men of integrity. And I think um, the family atmosphere that, that, that we have here is something that um, a lot of these recruits and their families are attracted to. And, you know, in, in a day and age where you're looking at um, where to go, where to win games, and where to get a good degree, there's also that human element that is so important. And I think that uh, the group of coaches that are out there doing a good job, uh, you know, I think, I think especially right now when we're going out and talking to the coaching staffs, uh, the high school coaches, you know, those coaches have a feel that there's a little bit of a brotherhood with uh, who we are. You know, I, I really believe, as corny as it sounds, that our coaches are in this business for all the right reasons. And that's to develop young men. Um, just had a discussion with uh, DeAndre Smith about, you know, just kids from different backgrounds and, and how coming to college, you know, really NCAA football, basketball are two great venues that give kids opportunities to what we always talk about is break the cycle and to get out, give themselves higher education and, and an opportunity to change their livelihood and the next generation's uh, livelihood. And that's what we do, and I think it's hard to, to um, it's hard to measure what that spirit is for the recruits and their families, uh, especially the ones that, that come in during the summer or the spring. 
and we are coaches, that spirit's hard to hide. And I think that's that's why um, we have good success. We have a great product and good people uh, that will be coaching their children. And uh, hopefully we can continue forward with our, our success on the recruiting trail. But I'm excited about it. <coughs> I know we're all extremely enthusiastic. You know, this year, in a lot of ways, unfortunately, we've had to play a lot of those young recruits that we recruited in our first full recruiting class last year. Um, you know, A.J. Long at the quarterback position. You know, really he was third or fourth on the depth chart. You know, he's our starter. Um, at the middle linebacker position, the quarterback of the defense, it was Marquise Hodge, and then it was Luke Arsenega, and then Zaire Franklin. So we got another third team freshman playing in the starting role right now. Um, and those are kids, you know, to me, I'm like, you know, this is pretty good. Irvin Phillips. You know, a lot of people question, you know, why are we taking this kid from Connecticut? He's undersized. He's not this. He's not that. That kid's going to have a hell of a career here. And uh, so uh, Steve Ishmael, another true freshman, um, who probably we knew we were going to play Steve this year, but when we lost Ashton and Brisley, and then Avant was going to be the third slot, and then Ben Lewis would move from outside in, so now Stevie, his role moves up even more another third or fourth family type of guy that ends up getting thrown to the wolves a little bit earlier than we thought. Antoine Cordy. I mean, <laughs> well, the more I talk about it, the <laughs> it's a blessing in disguise. That's what it is, because we're going to have great competition with kids that may not have been on the football field a whole lot that were forced to be thrown to the wolves early. So I think that, that competition where some of these guys that were, that were down with injuries are going to say, holy cow, I better get healthy fast because I got a guy to compete against now. So I'm pleased with the, those, those young recruits that are playing now, like Cordy. We had to make a decision on which corner to play as that fourth or fifth guy. We moved Winfield to a uh, corner early in the in camp. So when Wayne Morgan went down, and then we said, okay, uh, if, if something happens, who's going to be the next guy in? We said, well, Winfield could be that next guy, that third or fourth guy. Fourth or fifth would be Cordy. And then Wiggum goes down and Winfield this last game. So Cordy goes in, makes an interception, almost gets two, had four or five tackles, and was still playing a bunch in the kicking game. Feel good about that young freshman. And I think this next class, even though I can't name them by names, is very similar, in a, both athletically and in character um, with those guys. So I'm excited about the future. You know, a lot of people trying to beat me up and beat us up because things haven't gone as well as we wanted to. But when I look at who we're playing with, these kids are going to be so much better as sophomores because we know so much about them. And you know what? They know more about the game. I mean, A.J. Long going out and starting against Florida State, playing against Florida, or not starting, playing a bunch of football against Florida State when Austin went down. What better way to learn? You know, difficult, you know, difficult now, especially for us older guys that are saying, what's going on, you know? But what do you do? You weather the storm. You fight the good fight with the, with the young kids, helping the older kids try to come up with a victory against Boston College to finish this thing out. But when you, when you do turn the page and start to peek forward, there's a lot of encouraging things going on from a football coach's point of view, from inside out. Now, from outside in, you're going to get all this other stuff, go ahead and just flat out wins and losses. Uh, but we don't deal with that. And we deal with from inside out. We know where we're headed. And I'm excited. I'm as motivated as I've ever been about the future of Syracuse football. Now, from outsiders looking in, they'll say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I do, because I chose this to be my livelihood. And so have, so have these coaches. And I love our kids, and I love the kids. We're going to get in here next year, and it's going to be a great situation. We just got to weather the storm right now and fight the good fight, go up to Boston College and try to get after them and uh, enjoy the fight, enjoy that process. And that's where we are. So. Let's go do it. Nico. Good to see you, Coach. Hi, Nico. Yeah, and you mentioned you went over to Boston College. You know, what does that do, potentially, momentum-wise, if you head into the offseason? Well, that? any win always helps momentum, sometimes more from outside in, because the quiet, silent, moral victories from within that go unnoticed, except by the family members, the team, um, I think are, are probably extremely underrated as well. Because when things don't go well, and you can look around the room and say there's no cracks in the cup, and the kids are continuing to fight for one another, and there's no 
finger point. It's all thumb point. I couldn't be more proud of the team this year compared to all my season coaching. I enjoy, and, I, and I'm as proud of this team as any team I ever had, any team I've ever been involved with. Once again, from the outside in, they're saying he's crazy. Well, you're not in my family. You see what I'm saying? Now, we got a lot of, we got a lot of great people, some great uh, uh, former uh, athletes here that have continued to do a great job supporting us when things were bad from outside in, when things weren't going well. You know, I can go right down the list, you know, from Michael Bill to, I mean, right down the list. And, that's, and those guys, they get it, and they're extended family. You know, which, what do you do? When things are tough as a family, you become tighter. You know, my, my, my children, my two children are extremely close because we moved a lot. Daddy get an opportunity to go to another place, get another job. We pick up the bags. They got to go to a new school. They got to do all these things. And, and, and both highs and lows, those situations, our family became tighter. They become tighter. And that's why I feel about our football team. I think, I think uh, the lessons learned this season are going to greatly increase our opportunities to be a tougher, more uh, resilient team in the future. And we know a lot more about kids, you know, because they actually play the game. So, you know, to me, there's a ton of great lessons going on right here from within. Yeah. You answer, you talked about every freshman I was going to ask you about. So kind of <laughs> looking at <laughs> going off of that and, and looking at this team, you've been in situations before where you've had struggling seasons, you've had to face a lot of adversity and learn, and you've turned it around. Sure. How confident are you in the character or the integrity of this group yeah. that they can do the same type there's of thing? There's no doubt in my mind. There's not, there's not an ounce of doubt in my mind. You know, we always talk about controlling the control. Now we're forced to practice what we preach. We can't control injuries. You know, it happens. Unfortunately, this year it happened, you know, and, 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 uh, <laughs> to, to a level that I've never been around. So what do you do? Do you feel sorry for yourself? Do you, you know, no, you say, well, here we go. AJ, Franklin, Gordy, uh, Ishmael. Right down the list. You go right down the list and say, okay, there's the blessing in disguise. There's the silver lining. Nobody has to know it except for us. And we'll go out there next year and we'll kick tail with these kids because we'll be deeper and we'll know more about them. So to me, uh, there's no doubt in my mind. Sure. With the uh, finish line in sight, is there any challenges as a coach to get these guys ready or maybe get the focus a little bit more uh, tuned on Boston College because they, they kind of see uh, the break coming up here? Yeah, to some degree, there's no doubt about that. It's a great question you ask. Um, it's no different than anything. You know, when you, see, when, you, when you can see the finish line, when you can see the finish line and you don't have an opportunity to continue to play, you know, go to a bowl game, um, it's always more difficult. It's always more difficult when the, when the uh, extrin extrinsic uh, um, opportunities to value a bowl game, you know, aren't there, then you've got to turn it in. Intrinsic, you know, is, is going to be the key, which is great because these kids will learn more from finding a way to get it done from within than they would from, you know, hey, get more bowl gear, or the bowl ring, and that sort of thing. You know what I mean? So to me, it is a, it is a hell of a challenge with, you know, 18 to 21, 22 year old kids, uh, but it's, it's exactly what we as teachers, as coaches, I always feel like coaches are truly teachers first. Um, you look forward to those those challenges and those opportunities, you know, albeit it's difficult, but you know, what in life is worthwhile that wasn't difficult, and that's where we are. The kids that will be sitting in these seats that you guys are sitting in right now in a couple hours, you know, we'll take it to the next step. You know, we had a chance to uh, uh, to, to look at, uh, have you guys seen the movie Lone Survivor? Anybody see that? You get a chance to watch it. And then uh, the, the guy that is the Lone Survivor, uh, he's out there on YouTube now. And uh, really an interesting story. And uh, a great appreciation for something greater than what we're doing. But a great example when things are down. I always feel like when things aren't going well, it's important to use the real life examples of things that are far more difficult than what we're going through uh, as lessons for our kids to stop, reflect where we are, and quit feeling sorry for yourself. You know, self pity is something that we as you know we as people are always going to deal with. I had a lot of self pity after the pit game on the airplane. 
uh, on the way home, feeling sorry for myself, on the bus, going to bed, staring at the ceiling. And then you gotta fire up and say, all right, let's go. Come on, there's real stuff going on. So we used, uh, as an example, this lone survivor story, a true story about an extremely, uh, extremely tough man that, that was fighting a real good fight for our military to do some great things to protect our country, to show the kids, hey, look, we don't have it that bad. Let's go. Let's go play some football. Let's feel great about the way we finish. Win, lose, or draw, when we turn on the tape, do we appreciate the fact that we continue to play as hard as we could for as long as we could and didn't worry about things on the outside? So that's the goal, and that's the challenge, and uh, it is a challenge. Last question, Steve. I wanted to go back to the pit game. I think there's like seven and a half minutes left, and you guys had a fourth and one around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I decided to punt the ball. I'm a defensive mentality. Uh, I feel field position. I've seen it for so many years in my career, and I've been on defense. I feel like we kick that ball, get him inside the 10, uh, get him backed up, maybe force a turnover, and help our offense. It's been struggling a little bit. So I think, um, you know, 2020 hindsight, maybe I would have changed my mind on that deal. My gut told me to punt it, put him down, uh, try to put him uh, against the wall, uh, and, and give yourself a chance to uh, have a short field and some, uh, some momentum. I felt like it was the right thing to do. Once again, 2020 hindsight, would I do it over again? Maybe not. Sure. Good? Okay, thanks. Have a great day.